On today's show, who's going to be the second overall pick in the 2023 NHL draft? Matt Bay Michkov or Adam Fantilli? All that and much more on today's Locked On NHL Prospects. You are Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On this podcast, I bring you everything prospects related five days a week, Monday to Friday. I'm Hattie Kalakesh. I'm a scout and prospect analyst across multiple platforms, including this one. I've got another good one for you today. First and foremost, I'm going to be breaking down the choice second overall between Matt Faye Michkov and Adam Fantilli. We already know who's going first overall. It's Connor Bedard. I don't think there's much doubt at this point. But the next two picks will probably be franchise players, which speak to the amount of depth in this draft. So I'll be breaking down the choice between who are probably going to be the top two players um, to go after Connor Bedard in this draft. Then after that, we've got Derek Newmeyer from McKean's Hockey, who's back to discuss the WHL's draft eligible defensemen and some drafted prospects who are doing pretty well this season. Before we get into any of that, I just want to remind you to like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, make sure to make us your first listen of the day. It's always much appreciated. So let's get right into it. I wanted to sort of break down the differences in games between Matvey Michkov and Adam Fantilli and also the difference in production right now. So first, let's start with Matvey Michkov, who's got eight goals and four assists for 12 points in eight games in the VHL, which is Russia's second division of men's hockey. He's got zero points in three games in the KHL, but he played a total of seven minutes and 28 seconds in those three games combined, including zero minutes and zero seconds in his first game in the KHL. So he was dressed, he was on the bench, but did not hop on the ice once, which is typical for the KHL. I don't know why they do this. I don't know what the deal is with that. He played some minutes last season in the KHL, so I'm not sure what the point is there, but He was dressed, he was on the bench, and did not play. Now, let's start with the positives for Matvey Michkov. So first, he's the best player in this draft when it comes to playing 10 feet around the net. That's his area of predilection. It's where he excels. He's incredibly good in terms of pivoting quickly and using his agility to spin off checks and attack the net uh, when he's in that 10-foot area around the net. Um, he's incredibly elusive and dynamic. He's a player who can do a lot of incredibly good things with the puck. His tremendous puck skills are are shining through every single game, and they're good across the board. He's an outstanding shooter. He's one of the best stick handlers in this draft, and he is an excellent distributor as well. Now, what's really impressive about Michkov is how he can turn dead plays into great eight chances in the blink of an eye. It almost takes him no effort to... Um, take a loose puck, a, a board battle, something that looks innocuous, and before you know it, he's attacking the net, driving it, and stuffing the puck in the tiniest of holes in order to, to create goals. Um, his vision, his anticipation, his offensive awareness are all through the roof. They're, they're real attributes of his game and really make his game tick. Now, for the downsides from Ichkov, it's really simple. He's got almost no defensive value. Um, he doesn't really focus on back checking. He doesn't get involved below the dots in his own zone. He doesn't support the defenseman on breakouts by, by cycling low. Um, and also he's not the biggest at 5'10 and 165 pounds, but he uses his body pretty well in board battles, which is pretty promising for me. It means he's adapted to his lack of size by, you know, when playing against men, by using his body the right way in order to win board battles. Um, but still the size can be a factor that's detrimental, um, and but mainly for me, for Mishkov, is the lack of defensive awareness. It's it's glaring in his game. It, it's, it might not be an issue of defensive awareness. It might just be defensive involvement. That's the problem. I know the MHL is not necessarily the most um, you know valued league in terms of creating defensively minded forwards. But still, I've seen prospects out of the v, out of the MHL who definitely have more. Um, defensive value than Michkov. It's almost zero in his case, and that could leave him out of the top two. Moving on to Fantilli, he's got nine goals and 14 assists for 23 points in 12 games in the NCAA for the University of Michigan. Now, keep in mind, this is a stacked 
team. It's helping him a lot, especially on the power play in terms of getting him the puck in good areas and having teammates on his lines and, and on his power play that can finish his chances that he creates um, and, and sort of read the game as well as he does, which helps him a lot in that sense. But still, 23 points in 12 games in the NCAA is almost unheard of. Um, the closest we've gotten to that is Jack Eichel in 2015 in his draft year, who was able to put up that many points. It's a, it's it's near record brace, breaking paces. So he's doing extremely well for the positives for Fantilli. He's got outstanding puck skills, especially his shot is really good. Um, he's got great awareness and anticipation on and off the puck. He's a big and strong center who can drive play with a skill. Um, he's good defensively as well. He's pretty well positioned in his own zone. He plays through contact really well. He reads opponents' feet really well to create separation and catch him off balance when he's, uh, you know, moving up the ice with the puck. For the weaknesses, now there aren't many glaring, there aren't any glaring weaknesses in his game. Nothing that really stands out. But I don't think he has the level of pure offensive skill of Matvey Michkov. He'll likely put up fewer points per season if they both reach their ceiling. Um, so that's really the main difference between them. So the verdict for me is it's extremely tight. So Mishkov edges him out in terms of upside, um, not by a, an, an insane margin. I still think that Fantilli is going to be a, a an 80 plus point player in the NHL um, if he reaches his, his sort of average projection. And at his height, Fantilli could put up 100 points. But teams are going to be going for Fantilli for three reasons, and it's just three same reasons that it's tight for me between them, despite the 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 higher upside on Michkov's side. First, Fantilli's a center. That's a valued position in hockey. Second, the combination of size and projectability in Fantilli's game uh, is really going to set him apart from Michkov. So he's he's extremely um, w- well built physically. He's six two and one hundred and eighty seven pounds. He's still got a lot of weight to put on his frame. So you know that combined with the fact that he doesn't have many glaring weaknesses in his game, that's that combination is what's going to make him um, more likely to go second overall after Bedard. And third, Michkov is locked into a contract in Russia till twenty twenty six. So. Fantilli's readily available and could jump into the NHL right away. And for a rebuilding team that needs the the, the plug and play talent that Fantilli offers at second overall, it's a no brainer. If a team's willing to wait, though, the upside with Michkov is is through the roof. So that's why it's tight for me. I would still take uh, Fantilli ahead of Michkov so far, um, just because of the elements that I that I mentioned and the fact that he's more projectable. But it's extremely tight, and I still think that there's a very good argument to be made to take Michkov at second overall. So that's it for the difference between Michkov and Fantilli for second overall in the 2023 NHL draft. Now we're going to head head into my discussion with Derek Newmeyer about the uh, 2023 NHL drafts defensemen and a couple drafted prospects from the WHL who have been doing pretty well this season right after these messages. Do you like betting? BetOnline.net is your number one source for any wager that interests you. From the NFL to the NBA to the MLB and even NCAA football, UFC, golf, anything you like, they have you covered. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game on their website or app. They're, of course, a great source for all of your sports wagering information. With live betting, so you can keep up with bets as they unfold. Uh, They've got up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. They're the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online, where the game starts. All right, so Derek Newmeyer is back for part two of our discussion from yesterday. We were discussing the top forwards of the 2023 draft in uh, the last episode. There'll be a link to it in the description and at the end of this video. Um, but today we're going to be discussing uh, the uh, the draft eligible defensemen from the WHL and a couple WHL drafted for uh, prospects, both on forward and on D, who are showing pretty promising signs early on. Um, so to get this discussion started, uh, Derek, I just wanted to have you talk me through uh, Caden Price's game, what you like from him so far. Yeah, there's a, there's certainly a lot to like about Price. He's a very well-rounded defenseman. You know, the term I like to use with him is game manager. Yep. You know, he just manages the ice really, really well whenever he's on it from all three zones. I don't necessarily see anything really high-end about his game mm-hmm. as a uh, as a puck distributor, as a defensive player, as like a power play specialist, but he's just kind of good at everything. You know, I see him as maybe someone like a, like a Nate Schmidt, 
mm-hmm. in the NHL, like a guy who can play in a top four role and, you know, who brings a lot of value just being, by being able to be plugged into a lot of different situations, but maybe not a guy who's, you know, going to be a true all-star or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, he's at, he's had a bit of a rocky start to his season. You know, he hasn't been quite as effective as I was expecting him to be mm-hmm. after a really good showing at the Helenka Gretzky cup. You know, I thought he was going to use that tournament to kind of springboard him into the season, but you know, Kelowna has struggled as a team. So maybe he's feeling a little bit of the effects of that, but I'm not too concerned about it because overall I find him just to be a really smart player who puts in, you know, a really honest uh, work ethic all the time mm-hmm. you know he's he's good at the puck on his stick he moves well enough I think he's going to be a guy who really grows into a well-rounded uh, defenseman who can make an impact in a lot of other areas so he, I, I do like him a lot you know I'd, I'd still consider him as a first rounder but maybe in like the late 20s uh, early 30s at this point in time but I could certainly see him also being a guy who moves up that board for sure. Uh, for the moment, I'm I'm higher on him than you are for sure. I've got him just shy of the top 10. Mainly what shines for me is the intelligence in his game. I see a lot of advanced processing, some reads that I really like in his game that I haven't seen so far from the likes of, you know, Cam Allen and, and some of the other sort of highly touted defensemen. Obviously, this is a forward heavy draft. Um, so it's it's very hard to cut the, the line between some of the, the forwards available in that range versus price. Um, but I definitely, I definitely see what you mean in terms of a very well-rounded prospect with no sort of high-end skills, high-end tools. Um, I just like the way he puts it all together. Moving on from Price, I, I know Lucas Dragicevic. At first, he's grown a lot on me. I know he's grown on you. I just wanted to have you sort of talk me through him because he leads. he's leading all WHL defenders in points overall. Um, so I just want your thoughts on him. Mm-hmm. I think he's writing a, an 11 or 12 game point streak right now yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. He he's in my opinion one of the biggest wild cards for this draft because yeah. there are some tools there that are really really high end. Mm-hmm. I, I like the raw offensive upside to him. Yeah. You know he's got a heck of a shot from the from the blue line, one mm-hmm. of the hardest most accurate shots of defenders in this draft. You know he's a good skater. He's good at the puck on his stick, and he's still a guy who's growing into his frame. You know, he's about six foot two, about one ninety, somewhere in that range. Yeah, and he's still got more room to add more muscle and more power to him, which mm-hmm. is really appealing. You know, uh, when it comes to manning the power play, he's really dynamic. You know, he's generating a ton of offense, not just on the power play, but that's where he's generating the most of it. You know, he's the number one defenseman on that Tri-City team. He's logging a lot of minutes. And I think that's great for him because his game still, there's a lot of creases that need to be ironed out. Mm -hmm. You know, I find his puck decisions can be really head scratching at times. I find his, his effort level can waver a little bit, especially without the puck. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there is some risk to Dragosevic. But I also think there's a lot of reward. You know, I think the best case scenario with him is, you know, a number two defenseman who's also able to quarterback a top power play unit, which is mm-hmm. really, really valuable, especially as a defenseman who can shoot right. Yep. And he doesn't need to be a defensive stalwart by any means, but I think you can kind of develop that part of his game up to the point where it's not a liability. Yeah. You know, because he's got with his mobility and with his reach. You know, if you can really nail down his ability to manage gaps, Mm -hmm. I think he'll be able to defend at the NHL level. Truthfully, he is a guy who's rising on my board just because I'm seeing more progress where I want to see it. I actually watched him the other night, and I found that his decision-making with the puck was a lot better than where it had been last year. Mm -hmm. You know, he's making a more consistent difference, which is really nice to see. I think being left off of the Halinka Gretzky Cup uh, team – for Canada mm-hmm. this summer was a, a wake up call for him that he needed. You for know, sure. he came into that tournament with a lot of hype, especially after being at the U18s. So I, I think he needed a little bit of a wake up call to his game. And I like how he's responded to it thus far this season. 100%. Um, that's one main thing with him is just his his activation on in transitions. The way that he jumps into plays is absolutely tremendous. I've really loved that part of his game. Um, mm. There are some developments required on the defensive side, but honestly, you you know, he's the type of player, especially as a right shot, especially as a guy who's pretty lanky so far and, and has some weight to put on on his on his already tall frame. 
there's there's a lot of promise if he can put it all together. And I'd rather take a, a, a prospect with a lot of raw offensive upside and, and try to develop the defensive side than a prospect with, with sort of little to no offensive upside but very solid defensively and try to make an offensive defenseman out of him. Absolutely. So, yeah, no, I, I really like what I've seen from him so far. Moving from right shot defenseman back to left shot defenseman, we've got Luca Cagnoni of the Portland Winterhawks. He's been doing pretty good so far. He's sort of a shorter defenseman, but um, – what do you see from him offensively and defensively? Oh, it's funny. He's almost like a hybrid between Price and Dragosevic in some ways. Yeah. You know, he, he's not the biggest guy and not the best skater, but he moves fairly well. You know, he, he activates his feet a lot. He, he stays, he likes to stay in motion. Mm-hmm. You know, he's not afraid to jump into the rush, but his real bread and butter is on that power play. Yeah. He, like Dragosevic, you know, that shot is a weapon. You know, it's not just that he is a playmaker who's, you know, a pass first guy who, keeps the puck in the zone and tries to find his teammates. He can be a bit of a dual threat there. Mm-hmm. That shot is a, is a legitimate weapon. And, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to, you know, fault him for how much he's been able to generate offensively this season. Yep. You know, Portland's a deep team. They got a lot of different weapons, but he is a real integral piece of, of their offense, mm-hmm. which is pretty impressive to see. You know, and he, I do wonder a little bit about his ability to defend. There's a little, a little bit about his ability to transport the puck at the NHL level. Just because he doesn't get great extension on that stride, he's going to have to be real careful with his puck management, being able to weave through traffic to make zone exits happen, and you know, help on on entries. But I, I think there is upside there to him. Mm-hmm. I, there's just so much to like about him. He's such a smart player, and he just gets results right. Yep. Sometimes you watch him and you think, oh, he's, you know, he's going to get penned in here or that shot's not going to get through. But he just he keeps finding ways to be a difference maker. Mm-hmm. And you have you can't discount that. Right. He's not a guy with tools who's not getting the results. He's getting results and he keeps finding ways to get results. Mm-hmm. And even when they're giving him a bigger and bigger um, slice of the pie in terms of responsibility, he keeps being up for the challenge, which is really nice to see. Yeah, so other than that big three, Price, Rogasevich, and um, and Luka Cagnoni, is there anyone else in, on defense in the dub that you think has some value? Um, not necessarily in the first round, but as sort of a, an outlier of the first round, something like a high second round pick or something like that? Uh, Tanner Molendyke is interesting. Oh, for sure. Yeah, really, really smart defenseman, uh, really agile on his feet. You know, like these, some of these other guys, not the fastest skater necessarily, but his edge work is really good. His ability to move through traffic is really consistent. You know, he's he's elusive in, in a way, which is really nice. The offensive part of his game hasn't gotten there yet. He's, he's getting chances on Saskatoon to be a little bit more of a risk taker. And, you know, he's getting a little bit more activation. But that's a team that also plays a pretty structured style of hockey, really systems-based. So mm-hmm. it might not be the best place to, you know, put up a ton of points. Sure. But every time I watch him, I like him, you know. He, he reminds me maybe of like a like a higher-end Victor Mete, maybe like a diet Eric Branstrom kind of player where, you know, he's, he's able to drive possession. You know, he's able to help in transition a lot. Maybe the points don't necessarily come, mm-hmm. but – you know, he's really effective. I don't think he's a, a liability defensively at all. Mm-hmm. You know, for a smaller guy who lacks strength and maybe lacks a little bit of, you know, dynamic skating ability to defend a rush, yeah. he just he gets the job done because he's so smart. You know, he doesn't let himself be a liability with his positioning. You know, mm-hmm. he doesn't always win puck battles, but he gets in there and he ties guys up just long enough for his team to reset defensively. For so. Sure. He's a guy that is 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 in that mix, you know, maybe not a first rounder, probably not a first rounder, but I could certainly see him, you know, going in the second. And if he's mm-hmm. still available in the third round, I think that's a pick that pretty much any team would be happy to make. For sure. Uh, for me, he's the best rush defender of this draft, um, you know, in terms of the 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 isolated potential that he has to to, to suppress offense off the rush. Um, now, we're going to keep uh, discussing WHL players, but we're going to move on to uh, the, the drafted prospects, starting with a defenseman that's shown a lot of promise right after these messages. All right, so we're back with uh, Derek Newmeyer, the uh, Assistant Director of Scouting and Senior West Regional Scout of McKean's Hockey. Um, you can follow his work. His, uh, his Twitter handle is right there on the screen if you're watching on YouTube, and it's going to be in the description um, on all other podcasting platforms. 
So I wanted to start the discussion with a drafted prospect who's really impressed in his draft plus one year, and that's Kevin Korchinski. Uh, what do you see from him so far, and, and how has his projection changed since last year? Oh, man, I'm, I'm a big Korchinski guy. I yeah. feel like I was one of the first people to really be all about him last season. You know, I, I started getting some viewings of him early in the season. I'm like, oh, man, this guy, this guy's going to pop. This guy's mm-hmm. really, really going to pop because the tools are just – they're just so enticing. And sure. this season, he, he, they have really been popping. You know, he's generating just a, a ridiculous amount of offense. Mm-hmm. It's not just him. Like, that whole Seattle team is really good. They've got a lot of different weapons, and they're all working really well together to generate offense. But mm-hmm. – and I, I can't deny that Kurczynski still has a long way to go. But I love the long-term upside there. You know, he's just so smooth with his skating, with his puck skill. You know, he's so dangerous offensively, and he's just still figuring so much of his game out. You yeah. know, there are still issues with turnovers and, you know, decision-making. He gets caught yeah. out of position defensively. But, you know, he, he is when he gets the puck on a stick sometimes, you just see him light up a little bit, yeah. especially when he gets it at the offensive blue line. Just he's serpentine, the way he's able to, you know, avoid pressure at the blue line, you know, either cut into the middle, you know, go around guys to the side. Mm-hmm. He's just able to create so much time and space for himself mm-hmm. with his mobility and his puck control that it creates all kinds of options for his team. You know, he still seems like a guy who needs to put on a lot of weight, yep. get into the gym and put on a lot of muscle. He's still real scrawny mm-hmm. uh, by the looks of things. And that kind of ties into the long-term potential with him, right? If he really adds on, you know, another 10, 20 pounds of muscle, fills into that six foot two frame a little bit more, mm-hmm. he's going to be a guy that's harder to slow down in transition. You know, he'll be able to move up the ice with guys kind of draped behind him, not able to slow him down. Yeah. He'll help him in puck battles in his own zone. He's not going to be a guy who's a true, you know, defensive defenseman. He's not going to be relied upon a lot that way. His bread and butter is going to be the offense, mm-hmm. but it's really exciting to watch him because you just see that raw potential and he's slowly bit by bit learning more and more how to utilize his tools. And and I, I find that really exciting to watch. Yeah, for sure. What I've found interesting, especially about Korczynski is the fact that he's able to flip a switch. He has a switch and when he flips it, especially when it gets to puck, man, he's very hard to contain. 100%. Um, yeah, and, and moving moving from uh, defenseman to forwards, I just wanted to talk about uh, a couple forwards that I've always really very much liked um, and, and who have, have been doing exceptionally well so far uh, early on in this season for, in the WHL. Let's start with a guy who's you know probably the best player in the dub right now in Logan Stankoven. Um, he's a goal per game right now. He's got 11 goals in 11 games. He's got points in every single game so far um, for Kamloops. Just talk me through his game in general. Man, Logan Stankoven is ridiculous. Yeah. For a lack of a better term, he is absolutely ridiculous. I love watching him play. He is worth the price of admission. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'm jealous that I'm not scouting out of Kamloops and that I don't get to be there every night because he just whenever he's on the ice, it's electric. You know, his his motor is going full speed all the time. The way he I don't know how he has the energy that he has. He's always turning his feet. He's always thinking attack and he's just so good at it. You know, yeah. he, the, he's like a terror. He just goes out to like a Tasmanian devil and he just <laughs> attacks and attacks and attacks yeah. and he never gets tired of doing it, but he's also smart about it too. Right. He's not reckless in a sense. Like he's mm-hmm. not afraid. He's fearless, but he's a smart fearless. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a great shooter. He's a great stick handler. He's not afraid to, or he's not um, shy about making his teammates better too. He doesn't be, he's not a type of guy who wants to do it all himself. He's happy to defer when he, when he thinks it makes the most sense. And that's why he's also averaging, you know, an assist per game right now in in the WHL. He scored points in all 11 games that he's played last night. He had 12 shots on goal, which is just (laughs) ridiculous. It's absurd. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He's just electrifying, you know, maybe there are still a little bit of concerns about what it's going to be like for him coming to the NHL level, but I would bet on that guy 10 times out of 10. Oh yeah. I I saw him as a first rounder for sure in his draft year. I think the stars just got a ridiculous steal getting him in the forties in the second round, you know, he's a guy you can't bet against just with the way he plays the game and the way he thinks about it and his, his mentality, you know, he's not afraid of pressure you know, he's happy to be the captain in Kamloops. He wants to be the guy. He's just everything about his mentality and his 
approach. It's all really incredible. So Stan Coven is, is such an exciting player, and I can't wait till he's an NHL regular. For sure. For me, it's a combination of, of intensity and smarts. When you have those two together, I don't think there's anything that'll stop him from doing what he does at the NHL level. As long as you've got those two elements, most of the time you're able to figure it out as you climb the ranks. It's very, it's a very adaptable combination. Um, in a redraft, does Stankoven go top 15? Uh, I mean, I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't deny that. I mean, if, if I, I don't think I could name 15 other guys from that draft at this point that I would rather have than Logan Stankoven. It's ridiculous. It, it's, uh, have, you know, he got picked, what, 45th? 46th, I think. 46 or 47. But my like... goodness. Some of the picks in that first round were confusing as well. Let's not get into that, though. Um, let's move on to Jagger Furcus, a prospect who I think uh, was probably the best goal scorer of the 2022 draft. What's your thoughts on him so far? Man, he's he's sharp. Just the way he sees the ice is really incredible. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of pure, incisive, offensive vision, you know, there aren't a lot of guys who can, you know, who can beat him. Yep. You know, when he gets the puck in the offensive zone, he's just able to find shooting lanes and scoring chances better than most other people can. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's a guy who, and that's how he's had to play, right? He's not the biggest guy. He's not a great skater. You know, I don't even know if he's hit 160 pounds yet. Yeah. So he needs to make the most out of his opportunities, which is what he does. You know, if he gets the puck anywhere, you know, around the circles and he's got a second or two to operate, like something's happening For every sure. single time. And I also love just the mental approach to his game. You know, he's, he's, he's like, he's, he's fearless, like Stan Coven in a sense, you know, he doesn't quit. He's not scared of pressure. He's not afraid to go to the dirty areas if he thinks it's the right thing to do. And there's just that like killer instinct to him that I really, really like, you know, he's not shy about having the puck on a stick and the game on the line. Right. Mm -hmm. He's the type of guy who can make something happen. And when he wants to make something happen, which is almost always, yep. he's able to do it. And unsurprisingly, the points just keep following him everywhere he goes. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. I mean, for, for me, Fergus was not just the best goal scorer of this draft. He was one of the top you know, forwards in general. Um, I saw a top 20 pick in Fergus, and he's been proving me right so far. I mean, what I mean for him is a player who's constantly looking to get inside of contact, get inside uh, the the, um, the middle of the ice and, and make plays, and that's really priceless if you're looking at that outside of the first round. For me, where he got picked is, is excellent value. Um, now, we've got a bit of time just to discuss uh, the Matt savoy Connor geeky combo in, in Winnipeg. What do you see from him so far? Uh, I mean, the same sort of things we saw last year, mm-hmm. but progress in the areas that I wanted to see progress. Yeah, You know, Savoy is a lot more dynamic with his skating this season, mm-hmm. which has been really nice to see. You know, there was talk in his draft year about, you know, being a little bit on the perimeter, you know, relying a lot on the power play to generate offense. Yeah. His even strength play this year is really good. It's mm-hmm. It's taken real noticeable strides. He's become a much more significant scoring threat on mm-hmm. the rush which is really nice to see. He's still a great threat on the power play as well, but he's rounding it out a little bit more. Mm-hmm. He's got more explosiveness to his movements, and he's got a little bit more of an attack mentality in transition, which I'm really liking to see. Sure. So, And obviously, you know, the results are there. He's, he's generating a ton of offense for Winnipeg. They're one of the best teams in WHL again. And for my money, he's, he's their best forward and their best player in general. And mm-hmm. it's nice to see. You know, he's, he's got that confidence too. He's really feeling it. Uh, so that that pick is looking really great for the Sabres. Mm-hmm. And Connor Geeky has made progress too, which has been really nice. He, he's a tough guy to get a read on sometimes. Mm-hmm. I really fluctuated on him last year. Yeah. Sometimes I thought this guy's a surefire top 10 pick. And then other times I'd be like, oh man, I don't know if I could take this guy in the first round yeah. just because he was so inconsistent. Mm-hmm. But I am seeing a little bit more consistency this season. I, I still feel like he's got more to give. I don't think he's taking over games in the way that he is able to Mm -hmm. with his incredible combination of tools. You know, his his puck protection with his size and his reach is awesome. He's a great shooter who doesn't quite shoot enough. You know, his playmaking ability for a big guy is incredible. Mm -hmm. I still don't know if he's necessarily going to stay a center, which is a little concerning. I'd like to see him, you know, improve his two way game and his reliability to stay in that position. (laughs) But you know, you take what you, you what you get with with geeky because there's there is still a lot to like, 
And with the situation in Winnipeg, like I've said before, this have a ton of offensive weapons. Mm-hmm. He's not in a situation where he needs to try and do too much. Yeah. So I wonder a little bit once he gets to Arizona, you know, if he's going to be given a bigger slice of the pie, how well he's going to handle that responsibility. Cause mm-hmm. he's, he is able to do it. I think like he certainly has the physical tools to be, a truly dynamic game changing player on a consistent basis. I just want to see him get a little bit better at doing that. For sure. So this has been a great run. I'm glad you're able to come on here and discuss the dubs prospects. Again, this is a stacked draft for, for the WHL uh, and they've got a lot of interesting pieces that have already been drafted and are developing. Um, So again, you can find Derek at Derek underscore N underscore NHL on Twitter. You can find me at Hattie K underscore scouting. Both links will be in the uh, description below. Um, Now this has been locked on NHL prospects. I'm very glad you're able to tune in. And again, if you're listening on your podcasting platforms, make sure to make us your first listen of the day and i will see you next time